in quantum hypnosis therapy or any kind of therapy, you are always asked to go to the next most important point that you need to know in this whole story. You went to all these major, major important things. So that one was you were trying to protect them from being assassinated. Okay. So they weren't assassinated. Okay. So then the question is, how does that blend into this one? And did you change the probability in this parallel life? Plus the Pharaoh became conscious of the second one is in your humbleness in this life. Um, Cause you are very humble. Um, what I know about abilities is the, uh, and working with super soldiers and all that is unfortunately it, the, the more intense your emotions are, it can be anger or fear is the thing that often triggers your hidden or dormant abilities. It's usually a life or death situation. Mm. So well, the, frust the frustration I was feeling as an orb is that why are they not doing anything? Why are they not listening to me? And I could feel her saying, I can hear you. I can hear you. He can't. And she wasn't allowed to walk off on him either. Like it's just, it's just their protocol. It's not like, like here. I need to step it up. So is he, is he doing what Richard's doing going, okay, you need to step it up, meaning I need yes. to actually, so is this, is this part of the training again? So, so I get back after, you know, di I digested it all. I'm going, hang on a second. Are you guys training me to step? So I <laughs> just like, so then I realize it is a game. It's the game of life. It's, there is no perfect world. No. And perfect world is, is we don't want a perfect, we want balance. So we don't have the perfect world. We would like balance. So how do you have balance is balance is acknowledgement of uh, all the realms. Yes. You can't just have balance, but walk around with blinkers on. It just doesn't work. It's not going to work. They'll, you'll have things that pop up to encourage you. <laughs> well, and that's, that's what you're doing for the population. That's the awakening here. Mm. That's why we're doing the shows because how frustrated you felt like, why can't they see me is exactly what's happening in this realm where people are going, I want to believe I want to do it, but the matrix has them so locked down in their belief systems, right? That so, so you are educating yeah. at, at the most important time, which Neff knew when that time would be quote time would be. That's why she said not, didn't she say not until, uh, we had, we have, um, we spoke about this astrologer a lot uh, in Sydney and each child was born. We would see her 10 days after the birth. I don't know, it's those seven, 10, 14 days again, 10 days after the birth, we would see her and she would do an astrology reading of the baby. So it, we did that to uh, help us understand the children's own identity, not my identity. And just so that we could treat each child as their soul journey was. She warned us. And she did warn us. She said, do not travel. Yeah. She said, she saw great floods. She said, get to Especially higher planes. grounds. Yeah. Yep. She said, no more flying. And we just looked at her back then. It was like, how are we not going to fly? I mean, we fly everywhere, but we did. We stopped flying. Yeah. Uh, we did. We stopped flying just stop flying but also then the internet kicked into australia then we were also warned uh that in 2023 you will have some royal royalty will become the become world known and she as the astrologer she said i don't understand as she said do you have royal bloodlines do you have assets <laughs> No, 
what are you talking about? I said, maybe, well, maybe we'll be assigned to do photo shoots of some royal family or something, which I thought could be a possibility because of some of the places we had shot at. I said, oh, maybe we'll meet someone royal. And she's going, I don't know, this is kind of different. And she said, but she couldn't understand what the message was from the stars. But she said, in 2022, 2023, you go global. And then I thought, well, oh, that's got to be what it is. We must shoot some royal person and it goes global. And she says, no, 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 it's not just your husband and yourself. It's the family. And that threw me because I was like, how's that going to work? They're babies, you know, they, at that time they were babies. Mm -hmm. So we, we kept that information and sat with it. And now look at it. She said, everything will shut down mm -hmm. because it needs to. Mm-hmm, exactly. And it will be a scary time for many, but she said, uh, you will show up. And I was like, wow. Did not know what that meant in 1997, how it rings true later on. When you're ready for it. Yeah. When you're ready yeah. for it. Well, and also it, it appears that Richard in, is on board with you and yeah. your family's on board with you, right? He's not so much doing the devil's advocate thing. You know what I mean? I, I just love that it's on board. Where are we on board? We're on a ship. We're on our own. Vessels. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You think in metaphors too, right? <laughs> I need to step it up. So they're saying to me when I'm in that realm, I've got to step it up. So I'm stepping it up in that realm, which then has a butterfly effect here, which then exactly. gives the family proof. So now the family has more than one media proof. Now, what's interesting about our reality is that if it's in the news, it's accepted. Oh, don't even get me started. But if it's some woman talking on internet, it's not accepted because there's no certificate or scientific evidence, yet in the world that I'm seeing, the scientific evidence and the history, it's crumbling at a rapid pace now, really yeah. at a rapid pace. We're just going to show you the, the parallel uh, synchronicities with each child or parent or whatever, how they look and how they were known at Nefertiti's time. And if also, if there's any qualities or things similar as bleed through. So this first one, you see the um, statue of Agnaten. But if you notice the eyes of Agnaten, uh, they are very the kind of closer together, but very big and wide. Now, look at the eyes that I chose of Richard. One with the cigarette and one later and you will start seeing a similarity because we'll get into that in a moment i have a surprise for you to add greater veracity proof to um that souls will often keep their eye shape and their physiognomy of their face similar when they have similar missions and between realms and incarnations so you see those, so we wanted you to check those out. And then, of course, you have Richard as the male archetype, the overseer and protector. And then now you see Richard and Elsa, and Elsa, which is a feminine archetype, is the mother, nurturer, and teacher. And um, now what I want to point out for the first time is Elsa, I know your microphone's in your way, but um, here I have a picture of you where you get to see her very unusual sternum, clavicle, and you will notice both with Richard and uh, with Elsa, they have very long necks and you will compare that to the Nefertiti statue. So those are all things to notice. Super long fingers, uh, genetics, collarbone, neck muscles. Then Elsa sent me uh, a one and Elsie, you talk about this, about the Nefertiti uh, second MRI that was done on the Nefertiti mummy. 
Oh, yeah. Well, that's great, that one, because that was, again, another proof in the media. It just happened to come out in the press. And what was interesting is uh, they it was a second mummy or a second shell in the the bust or something and so they said this is her real face and they scanned her real face and again I didn't find this information one of our children found it on the media they said she's got a bump in the nose and I went what are you talking about she's got a bump in her nose I said I, I don't know what you're talking Neff has a bump in her nose look at this and they showed me on the phone that scan I said, so this has just like come out and she, they were like, yeah. And the point is. And the bump's here. The point is, is Elsa has an identical nose with the bump in the same place. Mm. Almost identical eyes, identical face, a lot of the same kind of thing. Mm. Um, so there a you lot of, go. Ahead. A lot of hairdressers would say that I have a very, um, alien like head it's got a lot of points on it yes which um i i used to think they were being rude <laughs> but it was more than one hairdresser so i had to uh well rip. if you have some <laughs> if you have some reptilian genes or dragon genes you can have some leftover points <laughs> oh. Well, I just would laugh. I'd say, well, not. it would be boring if we all had perfect heads. So. Well, and uh, of course, uh, we know why many of the pharaohs and different people, you know, wore the big caps and popes and stuff like that, because there's a lot of different shapes of heads for different hybridizations and species. We're going to go next to Tutankhamun, who is probably the most famous child uh, of... Nefertiti, and also here is the son of Elsa and Richard, and you can see a similar facial structure here. And then you also see, you see him a little older, where he looks very much more Egyptian. Elsa, you mentioned to me something, and I, I didn't understand it. You mentioned uh, to me quickly, you referred to gold from uh, to take on his tomb from Gimpy Pyramid in Queensland. I don't know what that means. So uh, I was listening to Mary Rodwell talk about our family on an interview. And she's doing a presentation on the Dillon family. And she brought up, by the way, <laughs> the gold in Tutankhamun's tomb is from Gympie. Now Gympie is between where Mary Rodwell lives, right up the coast of uh, north coast of uh, Australia, and we live just a bit. We live on the most eastern point, which is in the Byron Bay Hills, and the Gympie Pyramid is in between Mary and I. Wow! And as you know, Mary Rodwell is very well known in this field. She is. There's multiple skill sets. She's a nurse in Australia. That was her background, but she went into hypnotherapy, multi-skilled, and she works with all kinds of new, uh, very aware children. They ask to see her. So she's an extraordinary person and please check her out. She's one of my faves, even though we've never met. <laughs> yeah. At least well, in this form. Um, so that's interesting. And that also connects to the Gosford uh, glyphs. I uh, looked at an Egyptologist, very known Egyptologist, mm -hmm. who uh, went through all the hieroglyphs there to see if they he could prove them. Uh, they did this, I think, with uh, Steve Strong from Forgotten Origin. And what was interesting is that uh, as I'm he hearing his words uh, talking about these uh, these these markings on the rocks, uh, they keep saying it's not what not what you think. <clears throat> so what there? It doesn't mean what they're saying. It means something else. You're reading it from your time. 
Ooh. Oh, we don't we don't understand that word. Yeah. Um. So when they read the when when I see hieroglyphs now, uh, I don't see what they uh, through history have been told that they always say. Sometimes I, but. Again, who who is this person? She's now stepping on all these people that have studied this for years and years and years. Where am I getting my information from? They showed me that it's also interpreted by whom is drawing it. I was like, wow. So now they're talking about like who is drawing who, so which relates to our children drawing beings and who's re who's drawing who, who's writing what, how how their brush strokes or how their interpretation is. Change the whole hologram. Yeah. So yeah. then the so not only do they ask me to take back origin words here and decipher them, but now they're making not making, but now they're showing me to decipher other text oh. which again is very overwhelming because i don't want to stand on other people's toes but the information comes through so no you I need just to digest it <laughs> so. you need to follow the gifts that you're here to share yeah right you need to have a little bit of that neff attitude yeah the look <laughs> out of my way <laughs> and there's my hair in your face yeah Got a jingle when I walk like she did. Exactly. Does. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, the second son you brought up, and in the Dylan family, that is he's referred to as Jet, and they call him the giant, and he's about 15 years old, I think. And um, you call him the two sons, or our Neff called him the two sons. The second son was kept a secret, mm -hmm. whether that was for the knowing or the knowing now, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was. And the second son is uh, very grounding and that's very similar to how Jed is. He's very grounding and he's very humble. He's shy, but he knows his strength too. He's kind and caring. He's so caring, farm animals. He's, uh, he's actually assisted a lot of people change the way they look at farming through his compassion. Mm. And, and with the, the second son, coming through uh, that this was uh this was this whole two son thing went over a two year period too had a lot to do with the lismore floods so the lismore floods happen and i got messages that the two sons return that was the flood time so february yes. which is when we were coming out when i met mary to now, uh, three weeks ago, just after the shipwreck and the horse, final horse herd member arriving on the new farm, I got the messages, uh, two sons, rest home. Rest home? Yeah. Rest. I was like, wow, that's... That's a, uh, this is a different phase. So we had the shift in August 2-2 to now the two sons rest home. And uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a very calming feeling come over me. Yes. Very calming and uh, it felt, felt good for humanity feeling as well. Like, and uh, I, I'm sure there'll be more that links up to all this later on. <laughs> as it always does the two suns in our skies is uh, most people aren't seeing or don't know about so yet yeah and 
Merrily showed me pictures of others seeing two sons as well. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it, it's interesting because all this information comes out and, you know, I share it with the family and they're like, yeah, yeah, that's great, mum, thanks. Yeah. And we go on, we go on about our day go and then on. someone, <laughs> someone like Merrily comes up and then sends a photo and they're like, wow, wow, is that what you meant? I'm like, oh, she's, I oh, know. Oh, you're just the mother, you don't count. You're the mothership. <laughs> <laughs> you're the mothership <laughs> um yeah there's two sons and also the super soldiers that i'm in contact with verified that and a bunch of other things going on so but i thought that was interesting because two sons s-o-n-s yeah. well yeah. on the eclipse which was in the lockdowns uh i will find the date for you but uh we broke down richard broke down at two sons in queensland collecting the boat that's actually the town yeah then i had to go up and rescue him in the other car so i go up and rescue him as soon as i get there i'm at the lights and these birds start circling the car while i'm at the traffic lights and i've got the meter one in with the car with me genie and gidget And the meter one next to me says, you know, they're talking to us. And I said, okay, (laughs) all right. Like I'm being quite serious driving because I don't drive a lot. And the little girls are going, you know, they're talking to us. So when those two little ones say that, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, they're talking to us. What are they saying? I mean, okay, where? I said, okay, so where are we? So I start looking around. We're at two sons. I went, oh. On an eclipse, collecting the ship, rescuing Richard. We get to, I said, okay, let's, we'll do a clearing at the lights. And the girls did a clearing with me at the lights about two suns. So Richard's only like one or two minutes further ahead in lights. So we catch up to him. Then uh, my car breaks down. So we're supposed to stay there for a while and we stay there till sunset. Of course. Of course. (laughs) And then uh, as soon as the sun has set, we both return home without having to fix the cars safely. What? Uh, (laughs) The car decided to start again because you could go now. Yeah, and Richard's car as well. (laughs) And then (laughs) the other kids in the other car are going, what did you do? I didn't do anything. I promise. Yeah, I'm just checking. <laughs> did you have any missing time during that? Uh, no, what was interesting is where they broke us down. Uh-huh. Like we had like smoke coming out of the cars, by the way. But then we were, <laughs> then, so we've gone from smoking vehicles that are new, fairly new cars that we keep in good order and to then no problem. It's fine. And most people would say it's a miracle and it it truly was a miracle. But where they uh, broke us down, the kids get out and uh, it's still in kind of lockdown mode in Queensland. So having all these people, it looks like we're a a party group because there's so many of us and two vehicles and smoke coming. Both both vehicles have got smoke and I'm just going, oh, this is so... Where they uh, broke us down was a place called uh, Mermaid Waters. Oh, do, do, we, do, look, do. we look because we don't call them mermaids. We call them sirens. We sirens. look up. We look up and it's like the Tower of Sirens or something where we have broken down. And the kids are like, little ones are smiling at me because there's, you know, pictures of mermaids and stuff. So, And folks, in our earlier shows, her little, her two youngest girls, Basically, swim, call in sirens, sirens give them gifts, they can see them, etc. So maybe it was their yeah. doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, then that, that comes back to then it's not just Neff and the chem. It's not just beings from up there. It's yeah. sirens. It's ancient ones. It's the crystals. It's the cars, <laughs> the electrics. Co-creating. Yeah, it's... it's 
Hello, and Christine. when you and when you look back at all this in this way, it's a divine moment. Alignment. A lion moment. It's, yeah, it's all it, it's a you just and the name Dylan means uh the actual name Dylan means like a lion. Yeah, that's so perfect. <laughs> it's so, so annoying. Perfect. perfect. It's so annoying. It's just so perfect. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Um, what you're sharing. Thank you. Is now we're showing a picture that Neff gave me, which shows four of the daughters, Gigi, Jerry, Gidget, and Jeannie. All talk about that picture. Uh, so we were homeschooling the children and now because it took a while to home so the first four went to schooling in Sydney so they went to private schooling in Sydney then they came up here and uh, they we tried out a few of the country schools and we tried out the school in Byron and it just didn't really work it was so we decided to gradually we all be they all became homeschooling this was before the lockdowns and the as they this all happened this picture presented to us in and uh information was given to us and presented to us this was in 2020 october 2020 that uh there's egyptians in utah and they started showing us all the information they had on that and that was uh that was very exciting uh, it connected me a lot to understanding our connection with the states and especially uh, Sedona and um, that region. And we realised that the drawing is of four drawers and we really only have four drawers and the fact they're four, they're four main drawers. I mean, the other two have drawn a little bit, but it's not their thing. We have four drawers. Yeah, hold on. It sounds like she's saying drawers and she's talking drawers or artists. Drawers, yeah. <laughs> okay, artists, because otherwise they think what you pull out, the drawers. Well, that's possibly what I mean as well, is that that's what they do, the girls. Those four in particular draw information out. So they are draw, draw, and then ers here. And... Uh, so it, they like to keep the family entertained. So they, they present us with little gifts along the way. I think it's almost sometimes just encouragement as well from them. Keep yes. going. You're on the right track. Keep going. And that was when the girls got that picture, they were drawing the beings. They didn't know why they were drawing the beings. They just were. And then they saw the other realm drawing and they were like, oh, they're doing it too. Cool. <laughs> But didn't you say, do I have this right? Because we're comparing both families in the realms that Nefertiti and Anakin or Akam had four daughters that were artists as well. Yes. So that was what I, I, I was like talking about also is, again, you bring forth similar abilities, similar gifts, similar things to bleed through into certain realms if you're going to use them or share back and forth. And our, and the draw, drawings has been a very powerful way as showed in your previous shows where Gigi, uh, one of the amazing drawers shared like over, you know, lots of these incredible interdimensional beings. And there was, there's, it's so important for those of us that are visual because mm. we get it and all the strokes. Anything else you want to say about that one, hon? Well, that leaves then Gemma and Ginger. And I'm not sure if I showed you the information on Ginger, but I did. Uh, Ginger, uh, we came across information. Ginger is our sewer, literally a sewer. She has her own clothing brand that she's she's been sewing for over five years. She's 15. And she has garments. She uh, makes the most beautiful corsets from the 1800s. Like they're just perfectly made. 
the precision in them. And she, so she sews every day. All you hear is the sewing machine rumbling the whole house. And she has her sewing room set up. So she has one sew it, sewing room and she has helpers in her sewing room with the kids. They all help her. Anyway, Toot's Tomb, they discovered a, uh, a white box. And they had the unveiling of this white box and they opened the white box and inside the white box was sewing and fabrics. And that's the same daughter as Ginger in the... Yes. Yes. That is so beautiful. That's so yeah. beautiful. I have all the names here for people because I, I can barely pronounce them all. <laughs> we have... Uh, <laughs> Uh, we have Gemma Dillon, who's around 20, and she's, again, the oldest in this life, right? And, mm -hmm. and also the oldest in Nefertiti. And she's known, there's a whole story behind that. Uh, what a show off on her birthday, I tell you. Uh, I'll <laughs> say. <laughs> is Meritatan known as uh, Skota, right? So do you want mm -hmm. to share that and all about that? We connected with a gentleman in the UK who had uh, a prophecy of meeting me from a psychic 20 years earlier. Anyway, he told me his ET experience in 1978, I think it was. Anyway, I connected with his beings and uh, they said, share the information with him and he will assist you. And it had a lot of dragon energy come through him. And of, he lived in the land of the crop circles. So he came from a level playing field. And this gentleman was lovely. He's, so he, we ignited him. And through this gift of sharing of fair trade, of, 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 of being in our presence with his presence, he said to me, by the way, did you know that Nef and Akem or Egyptians were, uh, they went through, I think through Spain and then came through to uh, Scotland Island. Big time. And names. But he told us that night. Now I didn't get the email until the 28th. And then on the 28th, which is Gemma's birthday, I'm sitting in the computer with Gigi reading the email and then I click on the link and start hearing about Scotter, who I hadn't heard of. So now they're connecting us to Dublin Island where Rita was born. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> what? I remember Gigi's face and mine, we both spat at our coffee because we were like, what? <laughs> Yeah. And uh, Gigi's like, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <She's>... <laughs> and then they said Destiny's Stone. Now, Destiny's Stone yes. is very interesting because Destiny's Stone is connected to Jacob's Ladder. It's connected to the dreams of J Jacob's dreams where he would uh, visualize or remote view things. Uh, it was also the ladder. The ladder was like a staircase to the heavens, they would say. This destiny stone is used in coronation for all the kings and queens up until this yeah. point. Pictures here of that, yeah. Yeah. So destiny stone became present to us at that time as well. All in this, like, just by the way, this gentleman, by the way, <laughs> saying these words to us. He just casually says, by the way, and then the so way. we, yeah, and then what happened, so this is the dovetailing reality, is Gemma, Gemma was supposed to come home for that night for a birthday dinner, and she decided to come home in the morning, and she just drove in the driveway as Gigi and I had just seen this link, and Gemma comes in, Gemma comes in like the warrior she is, slams the door and goes, I'm here, it's my birthday, <laughs> you know. And she comes in and Gigi goes, you'll never guess. Like, I love it when they say, you'll never guess. And um, you have the best birthday present ever. 
And so Gigi tells her the story that we just had seen on the computer. And she says, you have a country named after you. And Gemma puts her hands on her hips and goes, so is this the only presence I'm getting? A country. <laughs> Where's the real presence? <laughs> so cute, right? Meaning the country is? Skota. Scotland. Scotland. Yeah. Which is named after Skota. Oh, I didn't know the, any of this until the time. No, 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 no. I learned this from yeah. you. I, I was researching. Yeah. It was amazing. So, so as people can see here. So in other words, one of Nefertiti's daughters and one of Elsa's daughters is Skota. Okay. <laughs> and there must be a lot about that that we, we haven't even uncovered yet. Okay, now, and that, as you see in front of you, is pictures of the throne and the destiny stone. Now, what you can see in the coronation chair is the stone is actually right underneath the seat, right? And so, or there's definitely a stone there. Um, it's hard to tell what the coronation chair is made out of. I'm wondering if there's crystalline, crystal in the stone. Um, but what the purpose of the destiny stone is now, the destiny stone, according to you, Elsa, the, the stone of destiny in November 1996 returns after 700 years to Scotland. The same time Richard, her husband, returns after 10 years to Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're talking this really close time frame the dates <laughs> like if not I it's very hard to go back because we didn't record dates then and we didn't have well there was no technology or calendars right. so but uh there's certain things that Richard would remember but he was like it was that date because it was it was a, an emotional time for him coming home as well oh I'm sure yeah, and so it was do very. Do you think it's a, a metaphor, or do you think that somehow your royalty and who you are is tied in to the coronation chair, Destiny Stone? Yeah. It's a coming home. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it's exactly coming home. Yeah. Okay, so we're all almost finished going through. So we had, uh, okay, so, so now. There's also a picture here of Scotta's grave, by the way, that you all can see. I also understand that Gigi has a connection to Isis from yes. a slide you sent me. So why don't you talk about Gigi's connection to Isis? Gigi's Isis connection and with her, Isis assisted Neff. And when you look at the word Isis, uh, which I showed you the pictures, you'll, I'm sure you'll show up, it looks like Gigi's name written upside down, which is interesting because I always refer to us being here in Oz as upside down, which then takes me back to the hieroglyphs where they, uh, they have said to me some of them are being read upside down. Yes. They ask the wrong way. That's what they kept saying to me. You're reading them the wrong way, upside down. So I was like... Wow, so uh, it's it's interesting. The River Thames is, I think, named after Neff and Isis. It's a merging of their names. I'm, I'll have to ch double check, but I think the origin meaning of it was about um, healing the waters again there, the dark waters of the Thames. And yeah, water which is every, what everything. <laughs> Yeah, which is a lot of what we were doing. So where our car broke down at Mermaid Waters, we had done a lot of grounding and clearing in that, that area too, which is where the border lies for New South Wales and Queensland, where there was a lot of heated moments there at the border through the lockdowns. So it's, it's it, again, it's all connected. It's connected to our reality. It's connected to the rivers, the yes. waters, the sirens. The Egyptians, the ancient ones, the dragons, I mean, the fae. It is all connected. It is. You see them together a lot, together with other, it's always these little two. And it's very similar to Gemma's drawing 
where she drew the two in a, like alien beings. It's very similar. Okay, so folks, here's also a great photo of the family together and they're all walking barefoot on the beach, which we discussed in our last show, the six scientific medical parameters of earthing when you walk barefoot on the beach. But I just love that picture of all of you. You guys just like a look like a pod, uh, <laughs> a pack, you know? It's so beautiful. Now I did, before we close, I wanted to share with you since we were comparing the similar features of Neff and um, Akem to Richard and Elsa and also the children, I wanted to present this book called Return of the Revolutionaries and by uh, Walter Semkew. And this is put together and was fascinating. And I have uh, some samples of the pictures here. Uh, there, one of my favorite psychics of all time who's been around for 50 years is Kevin Ryerson. He was made famous by Shirley MacLaine. It's a great guy. He's been doing work. And he's a couple of people who went to him. He said, you're the reincarnation or incarnation of so-and-so. And the whole book is has probably at least 50 pictures. But I just picked four because you're going to plot on this, okay, to prove the points we're making here that that often souls will keep their eyes or their facial features similar. So uh, I'm going to hold it up so you get to see Elsa and Walter Simicu, who was uh, who wrote this book, ends up being John Adams. So it's the return of the revolutionary. So what I'm saying in this in this show and through many shows is what we're having is a return of the movers and shakers and historical figures and things continuing on in their mission to hopefully do this healing. So here's John Adams and Walter Simcue. Now, when you see it clearer, the nose is the same, the eyes are the same, the expression's the same, the mouth's the same, the facial features are the same. And he's continued on. He's a lawyer in this life who has a whole, uh, incredibly advanced um, website on reincarnation. Okay, here's the one that really made me. You have Dorothy Dandridge and Haley Berry, both actresses. You couldn't get more close than that. Dorothy's big desire was to have uh, a Nobel Prize, not a Nobel Prize, but an Academy Award trophy. And Hale, Haley Berry came in and finished that goals because she has a lot of awards. But look at their faces, right? Their lips, the whole physiognomy of that. The, we have General John B. Gordon from, from the past. And he's, again, in a, a warrior archetype as an assistant chief in uh, uh, Jeffrey Keene, I believe in a fire department. And they often will even wear their hair the same way, their beards the same way, the mustaches the same way. That's why for you to, to look like Neff. And this last one is Iger Schachtman. And the reason why I included him is he never learned French, but he speaks French in his sleep. And he is uh, Louis the 16th. But the fact that he speaks French and never learned it and his parallel, I prefer parallel rather than past, is a, uh, is a French king. Anyway, I wanted to include those for everybody because it's a, it's a great book to go through and validates what we've been sharing here today. So I have one more question before uh, we close and I don't know how big the subject topic is, but I located a picture of Nefertiti on Mars, okay, which my tech associate also is a specialist in photography, Dan, also says that as far as he can tell, it is completely legit. So uh, you can go online and find it rotating around and it and it's definitely, as you can see, 
big headdress, the whole thing. So my question to you, Neff, is has Neff, I mean, Neff, I keep calling you Neff, Elsa is, has Neff ever shared with you about the Egyptian connection on Mars? Because I know you mentioned something about two brothers. Are you allowed to speak about that or do you know anything about that? The, the marking in the land of the face, uh, I found one in Egypt through doing mapping through uh, the, the new Egyptian museum called Gem, which yeah. is Gemma's name, of course. So I, for some reason, they took me to the architecture of the museum and connected it to pinpoint locations on Egypt. And it showed me that they took me to the whales. So they showed me that my name Hutton means whale. They showed me the largest whale museum in the world is in Egypt. They showed me this through the marking of a chem in the land. And how do I, how this do I a find chem, though. And Nefertiti or just a chem? Okay, just a chem. Okay, so that's a knot. okay. Yeah, what was interesting is uh, the area is called Fayum, which is the Fay. They, uh, there's no coinkidings. It's also connected to uh, the quartz crystal mines and the quartz crystal mountain there as well. So it all lines up with the, 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 the gem, Great Egyptian Museum. Yes. So, so uh, that was um, my connection. As soon as I saw a chem in the land, and then I saw the picture of in Mars, I. It, I felt was a connection instantly. Yes. So a lot of beings so, migrated from Mars and yeah, but you haven't been told more than that at this time. It's not to be revealed yet, I guess. The, the desert thing is a definite uh, similarity. It's a connection. Um, yeah, we, we, un until more understanding or digesting of it by ourselves, we tend not to speak about it just because, um, Yes. We haven't. We don't fully understand all the in, information, so we just don't share it out. Just uh, only because we don't. Uh, either we're still collecting, I, I guess. What would you say? You said hacking. <laughs> I'm still hacking. Oh, ha no, no, but ha I don't mean hacking away. I mean you're hacking the matrix by merging the realms. Yes, but they the hack and the illusion of separation. But hacking terminology to a horse person or a horse lady uh, is you're working at it. Yep, there you go. Okay, so why don't you share uh, your contact information? You have wonderful oracle cards and you also, you and the family do incredible individual sessions. So why don't you share how they can contact you? Uh, we have the website. The website is great because it uh, helps you uh, go through uh, messages we've shared with others that are not on our YouTube channel but are on others. And they're longer versions. Everything on our YouTube is kind of short and just enough to, if you're interested. It's <laughs> if jazzy. You're interested, just <laughs> if you're interested, t take a little appetizer. And then if you're interested, you can go deeper because it is a lot to take on. We understand that too. We do. We understand that. We've, we've been going through it over the years. So we understand it takes time to digest all this. The reason that we, sh we are sharing and we're on show in this way is to assist others to realize their roles, their inner beauty in themselves, in their partner, realize that where they are right now has a great purpose. It makes them realize that they have come here, they've come here for a reason. It's not to get married and have children and have weddings and birthdays and Christmas and Easter. It's not about that. It's about what you've come here to do. 
It's about what you're doing every day. It's not about all the big days. It's about the in-between stuff. And how to incorporate all this crazy stuff that we're talking about, but making it work in your day-to-day. -day. The daily practice, the rituals. Incorporating it in your bathing, incorporating it. So when we meet with people, we allow them to speak, so we listen to their frequency. And then it just prevails whatever inner beauty we see in each individual. And it just seems to come up at the right moment, the divine moment. And it's quite profound and a lot of the time when I meet all these people amazing experiences happen for our family as well so it's not just them going through it it's our family it's it's engaging and, and, and I, I I really do feel them in I feel them connect with them again it's very it's really pretty to watch it really is. It's a really pretty, ex um, and I'm very grateful that I get to experience that with others. It's not always easy, though, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's it is it, it's a it's pretty. Mm. Yes. Well, we're talking about bringing we're okay. bringing out the best, the be bringing out the best in ourselves. Yes. Yes. Sometimes it has to, things have to break and fall apart and fall down and slough off. A and we are rebuilding together. I feel the reality we want, the most coherent, and it requires the ending of a lot of the old. So, Elsa, thank you. That's very sweet and a beautiful beautiful message and your life to me your life and family's experiences confirm and validate just what Neff said there is no time and we as beings can blend and slip back and forth between realms like we do each night when we sleep this is what people are in denial of you don't realize or retain the memory when you come back, but more and more are learning to. And the integration of these truths is momentous for allowing what Elsa calls moment collecting so that ancestral healing can truly take place in now time between the realms. And it does require some vigilance to expand your consciousness by embracing shows like this so that humans can remember what they know, release our old programs around limitation and fear that are based on preventing you from consciousness expansion. And that consciousness expansion does not have to be fearful. It can be exhilarating full of awe and wonder. So what works for me is to try and be in observer mode more, aware with discernment and whatever works to bring that glint in your eyes back that reflect the soul in you that embraces new thoughts, new ideas and our new ongoing creation of reality. So simply remind yourself there's no fear for you are infinite and immortal and all possibilities exist in now time. So you truly do not and are not missing out on anything. That is just a mere illusion. So thank you so much Elsa for your courage to step forward and for the cooperation of your family. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Mar thank you, Marilee. Thank you. Thank you.